snap. Excuse me. Yes, sir. May I ask what you do for a living? Sure, I'm a realtor. Wow, dude. So can you tell us what makes for a good realtor? Because I've seen a lot of realtors, but never one getting out of Lambo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Welcome to Will Motivation. Hi. What's up everybody? It's your boy Will Motivation and today I have a special treat for you. We're going to go talk to my realtor Rich and I'm going to ask him the hints or tips for finding a good realtor. What's his opinion on how to identify, how to find a great realtor? Now, <clears throat> this is my Lamborghini Huracan that I affectionately call Knowledge 2.0 because it's the second Lamborghini Huracan that I've owned. And uh, yeah, so a lot of people tune into the channel because, well, they like the Lambo, not because I have one, but they like it. So if you do like Lambos, go ahead and subscribe for more content on the car. But what I like to do is I like to show you how I was able to purchase the car and justify buying a car. Cause actually I'm an entrepreneur. I've had a business for a while. I've always wanted a car like this, but I could never justify it until I started investing in real estate. So what I like to do is show people what I do when I invest in real estate and how they can do it too. So I am actually working on an online course and this video is gonna be a part of that course, uh, sort of as an add-on. Uh, so we're gonna go talk to Rich. Uh, if you are interested in my real, real estate course, just go subscribe to my website, willmotivation.com. But let's go talk to Rich. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, sir. May I ask what you do for a living? Sure, I'm a realtor. Wow, dude. So can you tell us what makes for a good realtor? Because I've seen a lot of realtors, but never one getting out of Lambo. <laughs> well, first and foremost is they're honest. Well, let me ask you, what's your name, by the way? Rich Shiro. So first of all, any realtor you deal with, they have to be honest. Now, we take a lot of pride in our honest. Uh, approach to things mm -hmm. so you have to be able to trust who you're working with the second thing is knowledge and I mean a lot of it the Oracle <laughs> yeah so I like to refer to it as tools and tool belt like this house behind me the guys that built that house had tool belts on mm -hmm. now that house could be built with an axe and that's it that would take you forever and the quality would really be bad. <laughs> but the more tools they have in the tool belt, the better you are. So for example, selling this house, you know, this $1.5 million. So when you sell something like this, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But when it comes time to finance it, when it comes time to knowing what the quality difference is between a one and a half million dollar house and a million dollar house mm -hmm. and those kind of things is real important. So if I'm an investor and I want to find a realtor, because I know not all realtors work well with investors or even know how to work with investors, what kind of things should I look for? Yeah, that's that's one of the big tools in my tool belt. Yep. I love working with investors. Uh, I, I have this one investor that's behind the camera and he's pretty cool. <laughs> But investment real estate is a real specialized area. And even within investment real estate, you can do land development, you can do rental homes, you can do flips, you can do new builds. I mean, we're out right now in, a, in an area that's doing new builds. You can do uh, commercial property. You can do redevelopment of property. Any, any one of those areas could be considered a specialty. Mm -hmm. But the trick to that tool, tool belt I was talking about is, so for example, I can handle land development, mm -hmm. I can handle new construction, mm -hmm. I can handle flips, mm -hmm. I can handle residential rentals, 
I can do a little bit of small commercial. I, I don't get into the really big commercial, but, and I can handle redevelopment opportunities because I study those things all the time. So when you're looking for that realtor that you want to work with, number one, a lot of realtors just want to do the easy work. Yep. You know, sell the home up the street. Yep. Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that realtor that only sells the home up the street doesn't necessarily know how to calculate a net operating income and an internal rate of return and things like that. So if if you get a hold of a realtor that understands those things, and then on top of it, the time investment for investment real estate is huge compared to working with your typical owner occupier. So yeah, the, the, the number of realtors that are investor friendly mm -hmm. are relatively small. And then the ones that are investor friendly that actually have a tool belt worth working with, working with that's even smaller. So I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt here. So you guys know this is my realtor Rich. Um, he's my go-to realtor, and one of the things I like most about Rich, hands down, what what made me know that he's a good realtor is his hustle. First time we met, it was on a Friday afternoon, going on a Friday evening, traffic everywhere. But he agreed to meet me at the first uh, property that we actually bought, um, and he became my realtor at that at that point because he sold to me. And he showed me how much he was willing to hustle because the, the average realtor would probably be lazy or try to set an appointment for the next day or the next right. week or right. something like that. But time is of the essence. So if you want to speak to the hustle that sure. you have, I don't know if it's something that you're just born with or you know how important it is. Well, both. I mean, I was born over in Eastern Ohio, dirt poor. My dad wasn't the most, he was a truck driver. He wasn't real educated but he worked hard and he instilled that in me. And he also taught me that I'm gonna treat others the way that I would wanna be treated. There it is. So like, it, you know, Will talks about the hustle and that, that first deal we did, it's the best investment I ever made in my realtor career. But I have a standing rule. I'll show anybody one house and until then they prove to me that they can buy. Mm -hmm. That is, if you talk to probably 50% of realtors, they won't even talk to someone mm -hmm. until they see a proof of funds. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't know if they want to work with you, mm -hmm. you know? So like I went out and met you, what we ended up buying four homes that we That ended. first, yeah, that first. And the thing I liked about it is you explained to me, I was a new investor and you explained to me the process and how easy it was and you made it easy for me so it gave me confidence right i mean the when it comes to hustle i mean in columbus ohio right now if there's a good deal that comes on the market and this is no joke friday i put a deal up friday afternoon i had people showing the property and by friday evening we had it in contract there you go now it was a great deal mm -hmm. you know so that's the kind of turnaround time that's required i had one deal that went into contract in two hours Wow. So if I'm not on top of it, I can't serve my clients well. Here's the best thing that I can give to your audience. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you really don't know where to start in doing whatever you're going to do, I don't care if it's a business, being a realtor, being an investor, doing whatever. You go to the busiest street corner that you can think of and you just stand there and watch the people driving by and watch the people walking by and you say, okay. What is the problem that they have that I can fix? So like in your particular situation, when we first met, mm -hmm. you knew a little bit about real estate mm -hmm. investing, but mm -hmm. not the big picture. Right. So your problem was you didn't have the knowledge that you needed that I could share with you. Yep. And together, I think we've made a pretty good duo. Oh yeah. Okay. But and more to come. <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons we're meeting today is to talk about a new thing that's on the market. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Now, Will might decide that he wants to get into it. He might decide not, not to. But it's my job to educate. It's not my job to sell him anything. Mm -hmm. It's my job to educate, give my opinion, sure. But then it's up to Will to make decisions, you know? So 
whether you're starting a, a drop ship business or whether you're starting becoming a realtor or whether you're uh, going to become a real estate investor mm -hmm. or any other business, mm -hmm. if you solve problems for people, the money comes. There it is. But if you do it because of the money, you're going to screw up. <laughs> you might make some money in the short term, but you're not going to be able to make a career of it. There it is. From the man himself, this gentleman here is responsible for helping me um, when I first got started investing in real estate and probably doing at least 35 plus transactions on the buy side and the sell side. If you want to speak to a little bit about the sell you're, side, right? You're underestimating yourself. 48, I counted. 48? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're underestimating yourself. 48, I counted. Forty-eight. Yeah. Wow. So we've done forty-eight together. Right. Now, if you want to talk about because a lot of times people only think about realtors when they're getting ready to buy, but also realtors help investors sell properties, right? right. So t tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So, of course, we're going to help people buy, and we're going to help people to to sell the properties, list them, you know, uh, do the things it takes to make money. But it's most important to talk to the realtor. The, the realtor should be the first partner that you hook up with. Because, for example, when Will and I started working together, I hooked him up with a lender. And then he was able to, to do more. When he needed help finding a contractor, I had some contractors in my pocket. Now, he's developed some better contractors than even I had. So I rely on him sometimes <laughs> for help. But the main point is that you want to talk to the realtor before you even get started because they can help you to either number one validate what it is you're thinking or they can maybe help to to tweak that a little bit and do a little bit better mm -hmm. now the ultimate decision is still yours you know if you talk to a realtor and he's trying to sell you something okay that's not the guy that you want mm -hmm. If you're talking to a realtor and he's trying to provide you with education, knowledge, uh, knowledge, market conditions, you know those kind of things. Mm -hmm. That's the person you want to deal with. Bingo. And you know, like I said, if I provide that information, then Will can digest it, and then he can make a decision, and then I help him to execute that decision. Now, I just mentioned realtors being on the buyer side. We're going to tell a quick story. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to tell the story because I felt bad about it, but one time I needed Rich's help to um, sell a property. Well, he was going to sell my primary property and um, I moved into a different house and I changed my mind and I said I wanted to move back into my original house that Rich had listed for me and um, Rich actually helped me out of that situation because well, I was lawyer, in contract. The lawyer helped you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I just helped make it happen once the lawyer told you what to do. But, uh, but yeah, it, I mean, I'll pick up the story. Will had a house that he built to move into so that he could lower his taxes. Mm -hmm. And then because of some schools and, and some needs he had, things that we won't go into, he needed to go back to his old house while we were in contract. Well, I connected him up with a lawyer that gave him some advice and you know as to how to make this thing do it and do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that no matter what you do, you do it right. Yep. You know, it's not worth taking a shortcut. Yep. And then once the lawyer gave us the the marching orders, mm -hmm. then I helped you to to get out of that situation. But the thing that was important to me is how you were professional about me changing my mind. Oh, yeah. Because if I had a bad realtor and I changed my mind and we're getting ready to sell this house for a big commission that realtor might try to talk me out of it they might say oh shit you know or whatever but Rich was very professional about it and he just took the position of helping me out which further strengthened the relationship yeah I mean not to pick on my own industry but you're right there's there's 7,000 agents in this area and probably 6,950 of them would have uh, <laughs> I mean, treated it differently than right. I did <laughs> Because it was a pretty decent commission. Right, you know? right, right. But that's the thing. I'm responsible to help you meet your goals. And in your particular situation, 
you had a, a driving need to be back at the school district that you were in. And that's cool, you know. So it's my job to help you execute those. And that comes back to doing the right thing and the money will come. There it is. Solve people's problems and the money will come. And that's what he did. It is not, I mean, I can't stress this enough. You can get a short-term sale. And to be honest with you, if I would have told Will, look, dude, you know, this is way over what you want to get into and all this, Will would have listened to me. Mm -hmm. And I would have had a short-term sale. Mm -hmm. And then he would have found out that there was another option. Mm -hmm. And then I wouldn't have done any business with him. And that was probably 20 properties ago. So he was thinking long-term instead of short-term. And this is another thing that makes for a good realtor. They try to focus on the relationship, solving problems. And I want to thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. This is man. the man right here. I appreciate you, Rich. My pleasure.